And of course, uh, what a great way to end off our broadcast here on The Full View, coming to us live, of course, from the Noordgesig Secondary School, Aspen Pharmaceuticals, donating 50,000 pads. And that was the target tonight for Siaguna Gegela, um, the NPO that is, of course, providing sanitary pads for young girls in schools and even in one of the schools like the one that we are in right now. So certainly quite a lot of excitement I tell you tonight as we are going to now really wrap up we do have Katleho Ngala who is joining us a philanthropist co-owner of Miss Teenage South Africa pageants we have Kanye Sile B. Matlangu, the current Miss Teenager. Hey, I tell you, she's so beautiful. <laughs> you know, a lot of girls here at the school were just taking selfies and everything. Kulu Star, Star Kulu, in fact, is still with us. And I'm going to get a reaction on that 50,000 donation right now with, of course, Lili Takwicha, who is a student at the school. Star, 50,000. Unbelievable. Pharma Suspend Pharmaceutical has come through. Your Aspen reaction? Pharmaceutical has really come through for the girls. We absolutely cannot believe that this is the pledge that they've made to us today. Mm -hmm. First of all, it helps us clean this campaign, but also helps us to focus our efforts on expanding it. So it's such a great kickstart. We cannot be more grateful. Mm -hmm. And again, to everybody else who wants to contribute, it really is as easy as going to siagonagegela.africa and to see at least 25 rand that you can contribute and make a difference. So thank you so much to Aspen Pharmaceuticals. Oh my goodness. Did it's you expect that to happen? Oh, not at all. We came here <laughs> expecting to kickstart something, you know, and for them to help us kind of fill that gap immediately. It really gives you the the uh, push to want to see what the next number is, where else we can go. So we're so grateful for that contribution. Kanye mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining us. You're looking at something like this as a young woman. We're rounding up, of course, we were talking about the stigma of period poverty and how it shrinks the confidence of many young women. Let's give them, you know, some pearls of wisdom now to be able to build themselves up from everything that they've had to go through, you know, to put up with the shame of, you know, menstrual hygiene. Yes, it's, it's such a beautiful thing to see such beautiful women and empowering young ladies. And it's so heartbreaking to see so many girls struggling with this because it's a natural thing that happens to all of us. So it's so heartbreaking and disappointing to see how many girls in this country and all over the world struggle with so much something so natural that happens to every single woman mm. in the world it's mm. it's really heartbreaking but um, this initiative it's a great initiative and it gives so much hope to yeah. even young girls like me who want to change their communities as well it gives us so much hope and power and it motivates us and inspires us so much so it's a wonderful thing Katlejo, um, it's important that young girls are also groomed even in their teenage yes. years. They're going through the shame of menstruation. Yeah. Um, you know, Kain Sila talks about the importance of restoring that dignity yeah. and for them to walk tall. Where do you begin tonight to, to speak to a young girl who's been ridiculed, um, you know, mm -hmm. and has been made to feel ashamed of being on her period? Well, first and foremost, thank you so much for having me. And I think the discussion is bigger than we actually think it is. Um, well, can you see the highlight? It's something that's very important, which is something that this is a global pandemic. It's something that happens each and every single way in the world, you know, just not because we're in South Africa or you're Kenya or Malawi. This is something that happens in each and every single country where once a month a young girl goes through a period of time, excuse the pun, you know, <laughs> goes through a period of time that is looked uh, up on shame upon and some don't even have, you know, the hygiene or the necessities to even take care of themselves during that time of pain where many people may have the luxury of I've got a period pain I can get a chocolate or whatever I can to cure my craving other people don't even have the luxury of even affording a proper pad mm. so it takes organizations such as you know today we have you know I, I was shocked when you said 50,000 I thought 5,000 500 you know 50,000 is a large number and what this is going to do is cause a ripple effect for other corporates mm. to step in and say hey we too can also pitch in where we can assist and encourage and motivate other people but the young girls should not be ashamed for something for going through something like this this is womanhood this makes us who mm. we are it is nothing to be ashamed or frowned upon it's something for us to build up each other on and educate each other on and to strengthen each other on especially during times like this
Lilita, uh, for you, you're in the school, we're talking to your peers at the school who are t talking to us about their difficulties. I wonder, what does a broadcast like this one tonight and, you know, what Siagu Nagegela has done, what has it, you know, what is it going to change for you as a young woman in the school going forward? Thank you for having me tonight. Actually, the, pro the, the project of Siagu Nagegela has, like, really taught us a lot about having like, how to be respected by other people during the time when you're on your period and how 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 boys make fun of periods which is something they don't know how it is to be in and how it feels to actually be made fun of of something that you can't even change as a person mm -hmm. do you understand that so the fact that they doing this project it really inspires us because we've had encounters as friends whereby we speak about periods and stuff like that and you realize that some of other girls they don't have pads or something like that and they're even scared to go up and ask the, for a simple pad what I like about the school is that we have cabinets in the offices whereby they keep pads for girls in case of emergencies but sometimes the pride or I won't say pride actually because it's something asking for a pad is not really easy mm -hmm. because it's something we we're never taught to ask it was always in the house it's something that you had to have mm -hmm. in the house and parents don't actually talk about menstruation which is kind of hard because the lessons or the, the advices you get from friends are really not enough because some others mislead you into something that you don't even know but so I suppose for you I'm hearing what you're saying you are pleading with parents yes to have conversations but with the young should. girls about yes. menstruation and also to make them realize that it's not a shame to ask for a pad for some from somebody next to you yes mm -hmm. because like when most parents don't actually sit down with their girl children and talk about these things. It's actually a matter of saying, don't go to boys when you're on your period, you're going to get pregnant or stuff like that. They don't actually sit down with you and talk about the emotions you go through, the physical changes that you go through as a girl child who doesn't understand how it feels like to be on your periods. The only advices you get or things that you hear are from friends when actually you should be hearing from your parents what type of things that sh they should educate you about mm -hmm. when you're on your period because whether you're sitting in class when you stand up it's like asking for from your friend do I look okay do I look this do I do mm -hmm. because on your period you don't really actually care how you look it's about what you are going through at that time of the month can you see Le, you are um, you know miss teenager essay it's an important um, you know crown how do you begin to use it in order to make sure that such issues of these young girls are taken care of well, the Miss Teenager South Africa organization's concept is to empower young ladies and encourage them to define confidently beautiful. And so with this whole uh, po uh, period poverty situation going on, this initiative links directly with the Miss Teenager South Africa organization. So we can use this, t I can use this title to empower these young girls and teach them that it's not a shame to be on your period, to tell people how you feel if you're not feeling well. Being on your period, whether you are on your period or not on your period, you should be confidently beautiful, the way the Miss Teenager South Africa organization defines it. That's what we need to do, uh, yes. star, confidently beautiful, to teach them to understand that even during this time they need to be confident. Absolutely, it is our responsibility, like we spoke a little earlier. It's got it's a, a physical conversation and an emotional one, so I absolutely agree. To also Katleho's point earlier is that it is a global conversation. We've actually done work, um, research at Siago Nagagela where we found that 12% of women in the world are going through this so it is something that is cannot be ignored needs to be done at scale needs to be pushed from awareness to tangible um, uh, effects across South Africa now um, one of the things that you know tonight a parent is watching and they wondering how do I begin to get my little girl out of the doldrums of yeah. stigma of anything what kind of conversations should parents be having with their young girls to build up their confidence 
I think the first thing is to really um, assure your child that you can do it and that you should believe in yourself. Self-belief is one of the most important gifts you can ever gift someone or assure of someone. Um, you know, speaking from experience, I was someone who, you know, pageants was very far away from me, very taboo, not in my family. As a matter of fact, I was a tomboy. Um, and stepping into pageants, I remember my parents and I had a brief discussion, a laugh almost, mm -hmm. like, are you sure you want to do this? because this, there was a side that they've never seen of me. And this was before I knew the platform that pageants can actually give one. You know, so from going into pageants, being in pageants and actually owning a pageant, I've actually seen what a platform where you can assure someone that no matter where you come from, no matter what background you come from, you can definitely do it. And it's all self-belief. All right. Um, yeah. Let me thank you all for your time, <laughs> Star. We've reached the target. I'm sure yeah. a lot of excitement. <laughs> I'm trying to contain it. I don't want to take over everything, but we're very excited for this kickstart. Thank, thank you. you thank to you. Pharmacy to and close. thank you so much for having us as part of your target and initiative. And uh, that's where we leave it for tonight. Uh, that was uh, Katla Khongale, philanthropist and co-owner of uh, the Miss Teenager South Africa pageants, as well as uh, Kanyisi Lepi Mahlangu, current Miss Teenager South Africa, and Lili Takwija, a student at the school and Star Kolo. From us, good night.